Michael Burry has noted that the silliness has returned to the stock market, possibly due to meme stocks gathering renewed momentum, but also due to the bear market rally that we've experienced over the past month or so. This stands in stark contrast to the significant concerns of there being a recession that might already be in play in the United States. So what I'm going to look at in this video is what Michael Burry said and whether or not it is the case that a lot of silliness has in fact returned to the market. Now my name's Mark, welcome back to the channel. If you have any thoughts about what's going on with the market, what's going on with meme stocks, do let me know that in the comments below. But otherwise, let's have a look at what Michael Burry is saying. So let's start off with Michael Burry's tweets about silliness. He stated here, the silliness is back after 1929, after 1968, after 2000, after 2008. The strain of silliness that transformed bulls into bubbles completely and utterly disappeared. But that familiar COVID era silliness is not dead yet. Like 2001 before Enron, before 9-11, before Worldcom. In essence, what he is getting at here is there's frothiness in the market. This can come from two overarching areas. One, irrational exuberance about the amount of earnings companies might have and or complacency about the depth of a recession that is likely to go on in the United States and more globally, but also more poignantly about meme stocks. And I say this because he specifically referred to a meme stock type situation in one of his subsequent tweets. Gamblers gamble more, the more they lose. And here he's referring to Magic Empire Global Limited, which appears to be a relatively small stock, a frothy stock that is coming out of Hong Kong. Now that went up, well really over 3000% on its IPO. In the picture he has, it went up 2000%, but it also went up further at one point. So in essence, we're seeing a company that had very thin trading, a very small amount of its stock actually open for trade compared to other listed companies anyway. They saw a significant upshot in its share price. And Michael Burry is getting the idea that this might be due to people maybe betting on this stock, hoping it goes up, and then hoping to make a quick profit. Now, the people who obviously get that quick profit will come out ahead. But not everyone will. Because if you're the one left holding the bag in a company that is trading at a price above its fundamentals, you're ultimately going to be the one who loses out. So in essence, some people might gain from this rally, but there will be a large number of people who ultimately don't, and ultimately are buying a company that is more expensive than it might otherwise be worth. Now, this is not the first time that Michael Burry has called out meme stocks and the like. He'd also noted this back around the GameStop AMC type surge. So around the height of the meme stocks, Michael Burry specifically stated, fads today, Bitcoin, EVs, SaaS, meme stocks, are like housing in 2007, and Fiverr, or .com, or com, or routers in 1999. On the whole, not wrong. Just driven by speculative fervor to insane heights, from which the fall will be dramatic and painful. Frauds too, the Worldcom and Enron of today. So again, he's noting that there could be a bubble, and he's highlighting in subsequent tweets that there was in fact, in his opinion, a bubble in AMC and in GameStop. He'd further followed this up in relation to short sale related matters. Now short sales and the concerns thereof don't appear to be driving recent fervor in, in this case, Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC and GameStop still. Nevertheless, he had noted that short sales are not inherently problematic. So for example, Michael Murray had said in relation to short sales in Tesla, if I had pledged the majority of my shareholdings to support personal loans, I may hate short sellers too. But short sellers on a stock have nothing, zero, zilch, nada, to do with the success or failure of the underlying business. Michael Burry here is specifically referring to Elon Musk using his stocks as collateral for loans, and potentially doing the same thing now for Twitter should that acquisition ultimately succeed. And Michael Burry is correct about short sales, but that's a topic for another time. He is correct that short sales do not themselves undermine a business. Rather, short sales are a response to a business that otherwise has declining prospects. Nevertheless, that is a tangential topic. So we can see what Michael Burry is saying about market frothiness. The next question is, is Michael Burry correct about there being meme stock fervor and other weird issues going on in the market, potentially giving rise to a big bubble that could ultimately come crashing down and harm some of the investors that get on board? Well, at the moment, we're seeing a few meme stock type scenarios arising. And some people piling into companies that aren't necessarily really well thought out trades. 
three that really leap to mind that have been mentioned quite significantly on Wall Street Bets, for example, are AMC, GameStop, and Bed Bath & Beyond. Now, I have not invested in any of these companies. I am neither long nor short in any of these stocks. Nevertheless, we're seeing a lot of fervor build up in Bed Bath & Beyond, at least at the time of recording. For example, we have a meme, I guess, which is a picture of the troops from the 300 movie, with the caption, We have been waiting for you, Bed Bath & Beyond. Now, I don't know whether this is for or against a rally in Bed Bath & Beyond, because ultimately the 300 were not successful. So this could easily be pointing out the futility of trying to prop up BBBY's stock. Nevertheless, it appears to be supportive as far as I can ascertain, given the nature of the sentiment on Wall Street bets at the moment. We also have another Bart Simpson meme, which is always a classic, with Bart Simpson looking forlorn and sad, saying, I should have bought when Bird Bath & Beyond was $4.50. Poor Bart. However, you see other sides of the coin here as well in Wall Street bets. For example, there was one post. Bed Bath & Beyond is not squeezing anything, but your left nutsack right now. In essence, getting the idea that there isn't a short squeeze going on in Bed Bath & Beyond. And this was in response to another post that said, I feel like I'm getting a brain aneurysm, reading through 99% of the posts regarding a short squeeze in Bed Bath & Beyond. And then it continues on with various sledges against people who are going on thinking there would be a short squeeze in it. This is very reminiscent of the rhetoric surrounding AMC and GameStop, where people were trying to trigger a short squeeze in both of those companies. We also saw this with Magic Empire and also AMTD, both of which surged significantly. For example, according to Insider, shares in Magic Empire soared as much as 5,799% in its IPO debut on Friday, as another obscure Hong Kong-based company saw wild trading activity. Magic Empire Global, a finance company that offers advisory and underwriting services, priced its IPO at $4 per share on Thursday. The stock hit a high of $235.95 on Friday. Magic Empire sold 5 million shares to raise $20 million in gross proceeds from the offering. No apparent news was behind the move higher, similar to the more than 32,000% gain in AMTD Digital stock earlier this week. Since AMT Digital stock peak on Tuesday, the stock has fallen as much as 79% as selling pressure starts to outweigh buying pressure. Another thing in common between Magic Empire Global and AMTD is that both companies have a low float of shares outstanding available to buy by investors. That means it doesn't take much buying pressure to push the stock higher. So in essence here, we are seeing quite a bit of frothiness in some of these companies, not all of which is necessarily supported by fundamentals. Now clearly we can pick and choose any number of companies and come up with any number of arguments for and against a company raising in price or not. But if you look at something like Bed Bath & Beyond, analyst forecasts are very negative about BBBY. For example, very few analysts have a buy recommendation on Bed Bath & Beyond. The current target share price is well below the actual price for BBBY. In essence, analysts don't think the price should be increasing. Analysts don't think there should be frothiness in the BBBY company stock. However, that's only one part of it. What about whether there could be a short squeeze in this company? Well, if we look at the short interest for Bed Bath & Beyond, we can see it is actually reasonably high. It's about 46.4% of the float, which really is significant and does raise the specter of a possible short squeeze. However, it certainly isn't as high as some of the prior short squeeze incidents where the short interest had been about 100%, and in some cases seemed to, at various stages, blip above 100. So it absolutely is not in that same type of category as the prior short squeezes we saw. So I don't necessarily see a short squeeze as being viable right now, particularly when we're going into a down market. A short squeeze is more doable when there's broader positive market sentiment, as was the case with AMC and GameStop. But when there's a strong possibility that we're heading into a recession if we're not already in one, and BBBY is in the retail sector, particularly selling goods that could be very hard hit by a downturn in consumer sentiment, in that scenario, there doesn't appear to be a fundamental reason that would help to carry Bed Bath & Beyond stock other than potentially buying pressure. So I think it would be risky, both to short it if it's getting a lot of attention on Wall Street bets, but also risky to buy it at the moment. 
What about the other meme companies? For example, if we're looking at Magic Empire, or if we're looking at AMTD, what about them? Well, if we look at Magic Empire, buying into it could be incredibly risky. So for example, there is a sheer dearth of information about this company on FactSet or on Simply Wall Street. Simply Wall Street, which is an online data provider that has a lot of information about companies' fundamentals and approximations for companies' valuations, puts the fair value for Magic Empire significantly below what it's trading at. They have their fair value estimate done at 34 cents. Now granted, this is going to be of very, very limited information, so there are going to be a lot of assumptions going into this. And certainly it isn't the nature of an analyst forecast and the full analyst model. But it does give a bit of an idea about where the stock price is compared to what its fundamental value might be. There isn't much analyst coverage of this company either, suggesting if you're buying into it, there could be a ton of information asymmetry, which creates a massive amount of risk. And if we're looking at this price to book ratio, that's 2,764 times at the current share price at the time of recording. So I think we have to be incredibly careful if you're going to buy into some of these surging stocks at the moment. AMTD also has similar issues. So again, there's a relative lack of information, at least compared to some of the bigger cap companies, which means there's a lot of information asymmetry about this firm. Again, creating a lot of risk if you don't do deep dive fundamental analysis for it. However, again, if we look at Simpler Wall Street, Simply Wall Street reports a price to sales ratio for AMTD of 5,350, which is insane and unsustainable. They highlight that it is trading well above its peer firms on a price to sales basis, significantly above the industry average of 5.2 times, according to Simply Wall Street. And the estimate of the fair value for AMTD is well under a dollar. So Simply Wall Street is indicating, at least based on some high level info here, that there's a lot of irrational exuberance in AMTD as well. Now, of course, Simply Wall Street is just giving an overview here, but it is incredibly useful. So while we're on the topic of Simply Wall Street, if you sign up using my link in the description below, you can sign up for one of their free plans, but also if you sign up for one of the premium plans, you can get 30% off that plan. And I found it super useful and hopefully you will as well. So do check out Simply Wall Street. So how then might you invest to avoid this silliness? Well, really you need to do deep dive fundamental analysis to work out which stocks are worth buying. This is probably a topic in and of itself, but of course there are the general rules of thumb I have previously talked about. These include, in the current environment given we're facing high interest rates and the declining economy, factors that you might consider include companies that don't have too much debt in their capital structure and or companies that don't need to keep rolling over the debt at the currently high interest rates and the possibly increasing interest rates, companies with pricing power with respect to both their customers and their suppliers so that their margins are less likely to be squeezed, companies that don't have significant capex that they need to undertake because those companies are going to need to raise debt in the future and this is going to be at an increasingly expensive rate and your stock prices are declining and you don't want to raise equity right now. You'd also look for companies that have quality earnings. So these are companies whose earnings aren't necessarily inherently vulnerable to consumer demand just disappearing. Companies that ideally have a defensible moat surrounding them. That doesn't mean it has to be a defensive sector. It means it's a company that has some form of stickiness with respect to its customers and or its suppliers. A company that is able to defend its product market position. And potentially a company that might be able to spearhead industry consolidation when other companies are suffering from a downturn. And indeed, this could be an opportunity for dominant players in various sectors. You might also want to do strategic picks within these sectors for specific companies that appear to, at least according to your analysis, have been significantly hurt in the market. So a couple of stocks that I've bought recently, and I'm not per se advocating these, but as an example, include Clarity Pharmaceuticals in the ASX, and the reason I've done that is it falls significantly in the recent time period since its IPO, but its fundamentals haven't changed that much. And it's been brought down with the broader tech sector, but it has a reasonable patent portfolio and its patents and trials and, and its products are going through various stages of clinical trials. So to my mind, it's an investment based on future growth that I think has not been properly accounted for in the market price. I've also invested in Unicredit in part because its price to tangible book value was incredibly low, and it appears to be able to do a reasonably good job in the current economic climate. 
European stocks I am generally bearish on, but if the price to tangible book value is low enough, some things can start to look attractive. In particular when those companies are really actually quite stable. And in particular when those companies such as Unicredit have enough cash flow to be able to do a monumental share buyback and have a good dividend stream. Now those are just two examples. And if you want to find out more about these, I have done a little bit of a report about Clarity Pharmaceuticals that you can check out. But I'm not advocating either way for what you should be doing in relation to your trading. Really you need to make up your own mind about what is appropriate for your risk preferences. But you can check out my write-up for Clarity Pharmaceuticals if that is going to be helpful to you. Regardless, that gives a bit of an overview about what Michael Burry is saying about market silliness, about why it is there appears to be irrational exuberance in the market, and why I agree with him that particularly in the context of the stocks he is talking about, a lot of the trading behavior seems to be slightly divorced from fundamentals. And Michael Burry is making a very valid point about this. In addition to the concerns about there being a bear market rally, given the broader negative economic environment that we are in. Regardless, if you have any thoughts about what Michael Burry is saying, let me know that in the comments below. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts about what's going on in the market. And otherwise, of course, it would be great if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel. And hopefully I will see you for future videos as well.